Hello everyone, uh, a very good day to you all. So first of all, I profusely welcome you all to Young Investigators Meeting at Chicago. Uh, it's an excellent uh, effort by research, science uh, and research opportunities in India, uh, Ben Step Forward Initiative, to bring around uh, 100, around 100 uh, graduate students, doc students, postdoc students, research associates, and entrepreneur at a common platform to interact with the stakeholders back in India to learn about what are the science and research opportunities are available for them as they are willing to contribute for the growth of science and technology back in India. I think after uh, National Institute of Health where we have a strong presence of uh, uh, postdoc and doc scholars more than around 450 uh, this will be a second largest group of such competent individuals which are together uh, trying to learn about new emerging opportunities in this landscape back in India. So let me start with uh, giving some kind of uh, preamble on what is happening between uh, India and United States in the area of science and technology and then with these things and these projects which are already ongoing, how these uh, researchers and uh, entrepreneurs can contribute for further strengthening the relationship. So before that, uh, uh, let me uh, introduce myself. I am Tarun Mohindra. I'm the counselor at uh, Embassy of India at Washington DC. And I look after here the areas of science and technology, health, atmospheric and earth sciences, civil, nuclear and renewable energy research, agriculture research, and also a work on a higher education between India and US. So it's a very large portfolio and I will say all this together makes the strongest pillar of relationship which is now in the 21st century between India and US. So what I feel that science and technology ties between two nations and their willingness to work together is today the key to address global challenges. So science and technology is increasingly becoming a significant platforms, a platform where the people want to work, come and work together if they have a common interest to address these issues and these uh, pressing problems which is faced by many countries around the globe. India-US collaboration in the recent year, especially in the area of SMT, that is science and technology, is also assuming importance because of our common interest to address these issues. So for me and number of other individuals in Government of India, they see science and technology as the greatest ambassador to build such relationships across the globe where the people with a common agenda and common interest are putting their competencies, putting their resources, putting their efforts together to solve the problems to address and impact humanity at the large. So in this kind of concept, India can be a very great significant contributor. The reason is India and US have a common inter interest and a common agenda. We don't have a competing interest. We want to find the solutions to such problems where at large the human and the mankind can be benefited. So with this kind of background, I would like to mention here that whether the political relationships between two countries, they are either on ups or downs, but the science and technology relationship remains a study and it maintains always an increasing uh, curve and it's moving upwards. To uh, explain this further, India and US science and technology relationship is not new. It is almost now six decades, almost more than 50, 55 years that we started joining our hands. It all, start, it all, it all started with the Green uh, Revolution. Uh, in 1950 when the US with their P PL 480 rupee fund was helping India 
to meet its requirement of a food grade. And later on with uh, land grant college, colleges, when uh, the US uh, est helped establish IIT Kanpur, and further on from 60s to 70s to 80s to 90s, and now in 2010 onwards, this relationship is becoming stronger and stronger. To explain that how this relationship works, in India, mostly the science and technology is the domain of uh, the government. Almost 55 to 56 percent of spending on science and technology and research and development is done by government of India and government of India institutions. So you have Ministry of Science and Technology, you have Department of Space, you have Department of Defense Research and Development, you have Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, you have Ministry of Ayush, you have Ministry of Earth Sciences, you have Department of Atomic Energy, you have Ministry of Agriculture, you have Ministry of HRD, and number of professional bodies and their departments under these ministries which are contributing for research, science and technology in India. On the other side in US, as such there is no ministry for science and technology. So our linkages at ministry level is, so ministry of science and technology interacts with the office of science and technology policy that is OSTP in White House. So the OSTP which is the apex body to assist president in science and technology policy matters is our linkage at ministry of science and technology department. So under Ministry of Science and Technology Department, you have Department of Science and Technology, you have Department of Biotechnology, you have Department of Scientific and Industrial Research, you have Science Technology Endowment Board, you have Science Engineering and Research Board, you have Technology Development Board, you have Visor and a number of other institutes. So all these institutions have uh, linkages in US with their counterparts under federal government in United States. Similarly, your Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, you have Indian Council of Medical Research, you have AIMS, and you have a number of regional centers which are interacting with uh, Department of Health and Human Services and other institutions under Department of HHS like NIH, NCI, and all their other centers, 28 different centers in NIH. Ministry of Ayush, which is a recently created ministry, has also their linkages uh, with the counterparts in US. Ministry of Earth Sciences has a strong bonding and collaboration with NOAA in US. Department of Atomic Energy has their counterpart under Department of Energy. So most of the uh, energy research labs under Department of Energy in US have programs back in India and Indian scientists have a good relationship. Ministry of Agriculture interacts with Department of Agriculture with their chief agriculture scientist and we have ongoing programs. Ministry of HRD also number of universities and the institutions of excellence have their uh, research ongoing projects and science and technology collaborations back in the US. So with this kind of linkages which are built over the years for the last five four to five decades is now at a stage when they are fruiting, fine, fruitifying into some kind of results. So I'd like to share some kind of important projects which are done under these linkages and how these mechanisms and how these linkages are managed. So India and US has a science and technology agreement which was signed in 2005. Under the science and technology agreement, we have uh, a joint commission meeting, a joint commission which, uh, which meets once in two years and decides a roadmap for uh, the projects to be undertaken and what kind of work to be undertaken under, these, uh, under this joint commission meeting. So joint commission meeting is chaired by the Minister of Science and Technology in India and Dr. John Holden, who is the uh, a scientific principal advisor to president and also the director of OSTP and also the chairman of PCAST. So these two uh, leaders, they chair the JCM and decide the roadmap what to be done in India and US relationship to take up the projects. Under this JCM, there are five working groups. And these five working groups namely are, they are working group on 
basic and applied sciences. There's a working group on uh, emerging and smart materials. There is a working group on agriculture, uh, biotechnology sciences. There is working group of, on atmospheric and uh, ocean sciences. And also there is a working group on uh, how to promote uh, the women in uh, science and technology. So all these kind of uh, work is looked after by this JCN and they give the directions that how this uh, work, they, they review the work done in last two years and also give the directions for uh, next two years that how we should proceed and how should we work on. Uh, just for a correction that uh, the working groups which I mentioned are on a basic and applied sciences. Then we have a working group on health and medical sciences. Uh, this is irrespective of the work which we do under collaborations with Ministry of Health. Then we have a working group on atmospheric, environment and earth sciences. We have a working group on emerging materials and manufacturing sciences and recently started working group on agriculture biotechnology. So now uh, under these working groups, there are various programs which have been undertaken. So I'd just like to mention few programs here. Uh, under mega science programs, so India and US are partner in establishing world largest 30 meter telescope in Mauna Kea, Hawaii, where India is not only contributing in terms of the competencies and technologies, but we are contributing by making around 28% of components for this particular telescope. And we are contributing in terms of the finances. This must be around around 1,200 crores project, where 28% of the components will be made in India, will be assembled, where the uh, telescope will be assembled. And in Bakken, the Indian scientists will give uh, get the time for observations and doing the research. As you know, we have recently signed uh, the LIGO MOU with National Science Foundation. So uh, the two LIGO observatories are already in US and the third LIGO observatory will come in India. So all three LIGO observatories together will do research on uh, astrophysics and uh, uh, other related science, uh, sciences involving, involving gravitational waves. Then under mega sciences, we are also addressing National Academy of Engineering grand challenges uh, in engineering. Where Department of Science and Technology, National Academy of Engineering and IITs are trying to establish national innovation nodes uh, in India on the same lines as National Science Foundation in US have the national innovation nodes in various universities. And maybe the first node may come up at uh, IIT Gandhinagar with the help of Duke University which will be having a funding from USAID. And also for the research on high energy physics cooperation and escalate uh, 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 sorry, uh, high energy physics cooperation and uh, a particle research. We have a project X, NX1 and also maybe NX2, NX2 where India may collaborate on neutrino project. So these are the mega science projects where India is contributing in terms of finance, in terms of components, in terms of competency, in terms of uh, getting the time to do research when these uh, facilities will be established. and. These are the emerging cutting edge areas where India has joined hands under this particular working group on mega sciences. In addition to that, we are also doing the projects for societal impact. Like we are working with the US aid and uh, technology development board under DST with the help of FIKI to involve the industry to find low cost innovation solutions for global development cha challenges. As I mentioned that when our agenda is common to solve the global problems, then we are finding the people to come forth and force the collaborations. We are working with uh, NIBIB under NIH to bring low cost medical technologies for uh, diagnostics and treatment, especially in India, the hypertension and diabetes are the two areas in which we are working with USAID, NIBIB and DST to find solutions where this kind of diagnostic technologies can reach at the remote areas. We are also working with the Department of uh, uh, Space, DST and also with uh, the equivalent counterparts in uh, US with number of universities including the Lawrence Berkeley Lab and other laboratories 
to find solutions to remove the arsenic uh, uh, from the drinking water and find a, a low cost solution which can be commercialized at a higher scale. So these are certain pro uh, problems uh, of global nature which are being addressed under the projects for the societal impact. There are a number of projects for SNT capacity building to build the science, technology and innovation ecosystem in India. So we have uh, programs to build the capacities for innovation and entrepreneurship. So there is a US and India Science and Technology Endowment Fund. Their Department of Science and Technology from India and US Department of State are uh, coordinating this fund to give grants to some projects under two categories of healthy individuals and empowering citizens every year. Uh, as of now, around 26, 27 projects are on and hopefully by next year, a few of the grantees of the first grant or second grant will see uh, the, their products and their technologies and their ideas are commercialized at a large scale in, in India and abroad. In addition to that, uh, I would like to mention few new initiatives which have started. Like uh, DST and Intel are collaborating to work on Digital India campaign which has been recently started or Digital India program which has been started. DST and Texas Instruments are working together for uh, manufacturing uh, solutions or manufacturing innovations in India. DST and Boeing are working together to create uh, innovation and entrepreneur culture, eco-culture in aeronautics and aero industry in India. Uh, IIT Mumbai, Tata Trust and USAID are working to create a societal uh, social innovation hub center in India. So these are certain uh, new initiatives which we are uh, starting and which we are uh, pushing hard so that they can have immediate impact on uh, Indian science, technology and entrepreneurship ecosystem. In addition to that, I would like to specially mention another program. It's called India Innovation Growth Program. Now this India Innovation Growth Program is an initiative of Lockheed Martin, FIKI, Department of Science and Technology and in a very recent visit in September by the uh, Minister SNT, uh, the Tata Trust has also joined. So they will be contributing 50 million each and this will be around a 100 million project where uh, 100 million of corpus of uh, grant where around uh, a number of uh, ideas, proposals will be funded to bring innovative solutions and to increase the uh, techno-entrepreneur skills of uh, uh, the uh, applicants. Now how it works, uh, so all the entrepreneurs who have some new ideas, they submit their proposals. So we have a data bank, we have a data bank of around 4,500 uh, uh, technology, technology idea pool which has been created out of this particular uh, program. Then we pick around 10 promising ideas every year. We take them for entrepreneur skill training at uh, Stanford and uh, 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 Texas University at Austin where they were given training for 15 days to further refine their programs and proposals and then they pitched their proposal in front of angel investors and uh, uh, your investors and certain projects are funded from IIGP grant and over the last uh, 10 years of existence of this program uh, there are over 300 businesses which have uh, come out of this particular uh, uh, program and they are around uh, 1500 crores of startups has been generated in India. So this is excellent program which with India, US and uh, private sector in US is helping India to create a startup ecosystem and startup culture back in India. As I mentioned that uh, DST and Department of State and National Science Foundation have a particularly chartered program for helping for promoting uh, women in science and technology arena. So this program is as on the lines of NSF of Visor and Advanced Program, which promote women in science and technology and innovation. So Department of Science and Technology, Department of State, Haas Berkeley School and Stanford University and AAAS are the partners for making this program a huge success in last five years. To uh, sum up the 
science and technology relationship before I go over to the next uh, important arena of health. I would like to spend two minutes on very important program. As all of you know that India and US has a program called PACE R. That is your partnership to advance clean energy. And R stands for research. It has a second component called PACE D, which is for deployment. So under PACE R program, US and India has created a center called JCERDC, that is Joint Center for Energy Research and Development, uh, Joint Center for Clean uh, Energy Research and Development. So it, it works under three uh, main areas. First is, is a research on <coughs> building, sorry, building energy and research. It also uh, works on the second generation biofuel systems. And third, it works on solar energy research and bringing out more efficient photovoltaic uh, technologies. So under uh, this initiative of India's uh, renewable target of 175 gigas of renewable energy by 2022, both the countries have started a consortia where under these three different areas of work which contributes for renewable energy, a strong bondage has been created between the research institutions, academic institutions, and industry entrepreneurs, where under PACE-R, they will be funded to do research, and under PACE-D, with the help of US aid and Ministry of Renewable Energy back in India, they will be given grants to bring these technologies to market. So it's an excellent opportunity for all of you researchers and postdoc, schol postdoc scholars. If you have some very good ideas, so you can have a principal principal investigator in US from your university and you can have a PI in India, you start and forge the collaboration, take a grant from PESAR, do research, make a technology and if technology is promising, use PSD called a pace setter fund, take funding from USAID and MNRE, bring that technology to market. So this is uh, a brief outline of what we are doing under area of uh, science and technology and how we are promoting uh, the and further forging the relationship between the two countries. Now another area on uh, which I look after and which may be of interest to all of you is a research under health and medical sciences. As I mentioned that uh, India and US relationship in uh, health sciences is again on for last more than four decades, maybe 35 years to 40 years. When the US and India started a program called VAP, Vaccine Action Program, where uh, both the countries were trying to find the solution to the global problems to reduce the cost of vaccines, which are uh, creating problems at the maternal and uh, child health levels, and especially in the countries of the low resource setting, where the uh, rotavirus, tuberculosis, and other kind of viruses have contributed to a larger death in the uh, Newborn, newborn babies and uh, at the uh, at the child age. So, India and US has a health dialogue. Earlier it was called health initiative. Now it's a health dialogue. So this started in 2010, and under this we have a four working groups. These working groups are non-communicable diseases, infectious diseases, maternal and child health, and health and preventive human services, preventive health services. So these four groups with their experts working in these groups and they have number of programs under each uh, working group. First and foremost uh, important program which has uh, taken a shape in last two, three years is establishing National Cancer Institute back in India. This will come up in a place called Jhajar in Haryana. So this uh, National Cancer Institute will be replicated like the National Cancer Institute under NIH. So it will be a 100 bedded hospital with a facility for doing our transdental research just across the uh, hospital. If you have visited the clinical research center at NIH, so on the same lines we are making it. And the target is to complete this hospital by 2020. Already the uh, infrastructure uh, construction has already started. So with the help of the experts from NCI in US, and the experts back in India from AIMS, 
from Tata Medical Center, uh, TMC, and the regional cancer regional centers. They are working together to replicate the facility of cancer cancer research in India. As I mentioned, uh, Indo-US Vaccine Action Program, and under this vaccine action program, there are 60 collaborative research projects. So you are working on rotavirus, you are working on tuberculosis, you are working on dengue, you are working on Ebola, you are working on uh, Zika, and even any kind of tropical diseases which are more prevalent in our part of uh, globe. So these are under part of vaccine action program. And I'd like to specially mention here that on March 2015 last year, uh, the Prime Minister has uh, dedicated the first vaccine called Rotavirus, Rotavac, which has come out of this joint collaboration. And this vaccine is now available for the kids at the cost of one dollar, which is the most cheapest solution, economical solution, I will not say cheapest, as the most economical solution for uh, the kids who are suffering from Rotavirus. The present cost of uh, Rotavac, uh, Mac, uh, similar vaccines in US cost around 10 to 15 dollars but the Indian dose is less than a dollar. So that's why I'm saying finding the global solutions in low resource setting is what is the agenda and the objective of India and US collaboration. Then with the CDC uh, Atlanta and we have uh, NCDC National uh, Center for Disease Control in Delhi they have a very vibrant bilateral collaboration and we are making the similar facilities work like a CDC in Atlanta, similar kind of facilities for uh, epidemic surveillance and the rapid action all over India. So the similar facility has been created in India as a global disease detection center. And we have a US CDC office established in India to help us and launch this uh, epidemic, epidemic surveillance system back in India. Then you have uh, program on child survival and maternal health. You have a program with uh, WHO, ICMR and uh, uh, US CDC on road traffic injury and uh, trauma uh, center. You have the program on HIV and AIDS. You have a program on biomedical devices and behavioral research. India is also collaborating with the US BRCP Brain Research Collaborative Program. You have a program on stem cell research and you also have a program on chronic uh, non-communicable diseases and diseases uh, uh, like uh, hypertension, diabetes and uh, cardiovascular diseases. So a lot of programs are uh, on between India and US in area of health. So this is again a very short five minutes uh, profile on what India and US do, doing in health area. We also have a big uh, collaboration between India and US on uh, atmospheric and earth sciences, including the technologies and research in the areas of uh, climate change and climate control technologies. To mention few, India and US have established a monsoon desk. It is called RAMA mission, Rama mission. So this monsoon desk studies the uh, African Asian Australian monsoon pattern and based on that they do uh, predictions for Indian summer monsoon rainfall. So in fact they have created the observatory all around Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal and they are doing uh, wave uh, ocean wave modeling and doing all kind of mathematical modeling to improve the quality of predictions every year. Then you have a uh, International Ocean Drilling, Drilling Program, IODP of NSF. So India is a partner to IODP and uh, in fact uh, there is one or two uh, uh, one or two uh, drilling expeditions have been taken up by the Joydus uh, deep drilling uh, uh, vessel in Bay of Bengal in Arabian Sea. We have a program on Geospital Intelligence Program where ISRO, NASA and NOAA and University of Earth Sciences are collaborating. We have program on uh, water resources, surface and groundwater hydrology studies and earthquake maps. We have uh, programs on fisheries and uh, blooms. So these are uh, certain areas of uh, uh, collaboration where India and uh, US work in the, uh, on earth sciences and cl climate uh, uh, change.
So with this, I think uh, uh, I've given you some kind of a background that the areas India, US scientists, academicians, researchers and entrepreneurs are collaborating. And as I feel that uh, the interest between India and US are not uh, competing, it's a common agenda and common interest to solve uh, global problems, especially and they're utilizing their solutions to uh, uh, countries where we have a low resource setting. So with this, uh, I see that the future of this relationship is very promising and it is going to grow multifold exponentially uh, in years to come. And as I see the growth from 60s to 2000, when the agreement was signed in 2005 and after how the relationship has grown. So I see that science and technology relationship transcends any political party or any kind of government in chair in both the countries. So whether it is up or down political relationship, the science and technology relationship and binding is steady, it grows and remains constant. And I have personally felt in 2013, uh, to, uh, 2013 when the relationship are, were quite low, it is a science and technology binding and relationship which has helped immensely to bring the relationships back. There were no interactions at other levels for other ministries, but the science and technology interactions and science and technology delegations were moving on the both sides. I also uh, like to briefly mention here uh, to the role of uh, one autonomous institution which helped to immensely foster and cement this relationship together is a autonomous institution called Indo-US Science and Technology Forum. Now, this is a establishment created by Department of Science and Technology and U.S. Department of State. Now, this is, autonomous institution has helped over the years to do around 400 bilateral workshops. It has facilitated around 10 virtual institutions across the borders between India and U.S. It has helped to facilitate interactions, over 15,000 interactions between the scientists of India and U.S. And in fact, before we sign any MOU or before we enter into some agreement, everything starts with doing a bilateral workshop. Just to give one example, before we signed the MOU on National Cancer Institute, there were three provocative question workshops which were organized in India between the scientists working on cancer, cancer research in India and US. Now with this kind of uh, bilateral workshops, they were able to make some kind of a uh, format for writing an MOU and then the relationship was further cemented and uh, systemized and structurized between the federal governments by writing an MOU. So this Indo-US Science and Technology Forum has played a very important role in forging and cementing this relationship together. A number of countries are trying to replicate this particular model between India and US through a uh, a nodal agency into US Science and Technology Forum that how the relationships can be made and relationships can be maintained. Thank you very much.